Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Dallas Stars franchise mode here in NHL 20. So in last episode we had the season simulation and we managed to actually make a trade and that actually helped us get into the playoffs. So we traded away Holweg who was our second line right winger. He was an 84 overall and he was not producing really much. So we upgraded him and we turned him into an 86 overall second liner in Hodges. And Hodges was pretty good actually with us down the stretch. As you can see here, 19 points in 20 games. Definitely helping out with that offense. And yeah, that got us into the playoffs, I think. Um, I was actually looking and Holwig actually got sent down to the minors by Tampa Bay. So they didn't actually end up playing him, which was probably a mistake on their part as they missed the playoffs. So that's kind of interesting. And yeah, the Hodges trade was actually pretty similar to the Sador trade we made a few years ago because we did uh, give up the lot to get to Sador. Both those guys are former Tampa Bay prospects. Or actually, Hodges was drafted by Anaheim, but he was dealt to last offseason, and then he was on the block, so I've decided to acquire him. But yeah, his career has been kind of good. Like, it's been solid. He's had a 76-point season at one point, so... This guy knows how to put up points, and that's why we brought him in. But yeah, anyways, let's get to this first round of the playoffs against the Detroit Red Wings, who we are playing for the third straight season. I showed you guys their lines in last episode that I'll quickly show you again, even though their lineup is not much different, I think, than the last time we played them. So as you can see, they have two really good players in Goldman and Lapierre. The rest are not too bad, but they're not as good for sure. Like, I think we have the depth in terms of offense, but they have the two studs. Uh, Lapierre is a sniper, and Goldman is a sniper, so they're definitely two really good offensive players. As for defense, though, Tevardovsky actually had a really good season this year, so we can't count this defense out just yet. They also do have a former defenseman in Braden Taves. And then goalie-wise, they have Bomick in Osgood, so it should be an interesting matchup. I don't know how this team had 50 wins during the regular season. But we'll see if we could upset them for the third straight season. Because the last two years that we've played them, we've been able to upset them. So we're 7-3 and three going into the playoffs, even though we did just finish just above 500. During the regular season, it looks like we didn't do too good against Detroit. So let's see what happens. Game number one at the Joe Louis Arena. Let's see if we could take game number one. First period. 2-1 to one us, okay, I'll take that. Oleg Tevardovsky, who had 70-something points during the regular season, and probably winning the Norris as well, opens the scoring, but then Ozelinch scores, so two former Anaheim Mighty Ducks players, and then Connor Clancy's going to score to give us a 2-1 to one lead. Shots are 11-7 to seven in favor of your stars. Second period, and it's tied up by Omen, not good. So it's a 2-2 two -two game, and the shots are 25-13 in favor of us, so Jaguar's not been off to the greatest start. We were one of the best defensive teams during the regular season, surprisingly, so hopefully we could play like that this playoffs. And there's a power play goal from Anton Lundell, who I believe is still the captain of this team. So that's a big goal from the captain. And there's another power play goal from Sidor, so good job power play unit, which kind of struggled during the regular season, I think. Oh yeah, I think it was one of the worst, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. I can't remember. <laughs> Even though I literally just recorded an episode. And Madsen scores to make it 4-3. But we hold them off for a one-goal victory. Even though the shots were 40-21. to So goaltending is a bit questionable for us, I think, at the moment. Okay, so Ozelinch from Antilla and Drake. Clancy from DeSantis and Franzen. Lundell from Hodges. And Sidor from DeSantis and Wong. Three stars in game number one. Tevardoski gets first star. Sidor to second star. And DeSantis to third. Okay. It's not a bad game one. I mean, we should probably play a bit better defensively. Or Jaguar should play a bit better net. But other than that, pretty good first game. Let's see if we can keep it up in game number two. I don't know if our AHL team is going to make the playoffs or not. Because I haven't actually checked their record or any of their stats really. So here we go. Game number two in Detroit still. First period, 2-1 to one Detroit. So Goldman, one of their 90-plus players, opens the scoring. Helmer ties it up. Helmer's actually been a pretty good playoff performer for a defensive defenseman. And then Madsen, who is also in their top line, scores to give it a 2-1 game. 
We're being outshot 17 to 7. So this is totally opposite of last game where we outshot them badly. Let's see if we could bounce back in the second. Second period. 3 2 us. Let's go. Clancy and Sidor. So our top line's been pretty good so far in the series. And the shots are now even 21 apiece. So wait. Yeah, they had 17 shots in the first. That means we outshot them really badly in this period. So hopefully we can continue this in third. So third period underway. We're up by only one goal. This is actually a pretty tight series. We had a power play chance, but we don't score on it. There's a goal, though, from Hodges. The trade deadline acquisition. Who might end up helping us out a lot. And there's a goal from Clancy again. Clancy's been off to a good start, too. He's got three goals, I think, in two games. And there's another goal from Antilla. All, all of our snipers are scoring, which is good. 6-2 to two victory in game number two to give us a 2 nothing series lead. Good job, boys. So despite being down 2-1 after 1, we managed to score four or five more goals and win. So Helmer from Franzen, Clancy from Hodges and Lindell, Sindor from Wong and Patrick, Hodges from Wong, Clancy from DeSantis and Lindell, and Antilla from Drake and Patrick. So all of our lines are kind of contributing, which is good. Hodges gets first star with one goal and one assist, Clancy to second star two goals, and Lindell to third with two assists. So I'm liking this so far. Our top six has been pretty good. Our bottom six has been solid. We got 10 goals in our first two games, only allowing five. So we're on a good pace right now. Hopefully we can keep it up and knock off these. I think you know, they were they finished second in the league. Yeah, because the Rangers were number one. And Rangers are down 2 nothing as well in the series. So the cheese teams are taking over this year. Okay, now we shift to home ice. With a 2 nothing series lead, we took two games on the road. Can we continue to win in the Reunion Arena? <laughs> that was a bit of a tongue twister. First period, scoreless. Okay, I'll take that. Shots are 15 to 11 in favor of Detroit, so a bit of more even of a first period in comparison to last game. Second period, a hey, two nothing us. Man, Detroit fans are really gonna hate us if we manage to knock them out again this year. Ozlinch makes it to one nothing, and Santis on the power play makes it two nothing. So our power play unit has been really good so far. Shots are 26-24 in favor of Detroit. Let's lock this one down. Penalty kill. Nicely done. Detroit gets on the board, though, as they get an omen. <laughs> power play, and we score again. Loving the power play unit. Goldman, though, makes it 3-2. to Come on, boys. Lock it down. There's another goal from Sidor. It's a bit of a back-and-forth game here in this third power play. Nicely done, or not, well not nicely done, but still. 4-2 to two victory, and we have taken a 3 nothing stranglehold on the second best team in the league. Man, Detroit is just not able to get past the first round, it seems like. They're kind of doing what we did a few years ago, because a few years ago we were a really good team, and we were simulating well, but we never were able to get past the first round, because we always got knocked off by bad teams. Well, in this case, now we're being that bad team that's knocking off good teams. So Ozlinch from Soleil and Franzen, DeSantis from Pavelski and Sidor, Sidor from DeSantis and Wong, and Sidor from Wong and Ozlinch. So Sidor with the three-point night. He's been pretty fantastic so far. He gets first star, Jaguar the second star, and Ozlinch the third. Okay, so let's get to game number four already. We're only like ten minutes into this episode, and we're, we're already having the chance of sweeping the Detroit Red Wings. We have now scored 14 goals in three games, selecting that offense, and we've only allowed seven goals, so we're doubling our goals against, which is good. Let's actually take a quick look at who's leading in the other series, just to add a bit more time to this episode. So currently Toronto's up 2-1, to one, Edmonton's up 2-1, we're up 3-0, the Jets are up 3-0, uh, Finland's up 2-1, Hartford's up 2-1, Montreal's up 2-1 against Quebec, so that's kind of a cool matchup. And Pittsburgh's up 3-0 on the Presence Trophy winners. Damn, okay. I think we actually won our first Stanley Cup against the Penguins, wasn't it? No, it was against the Rangers. Wasn't it? Oh no, the Penguins was a different Stanley Cup. It was last year when I did my 99 build. I think we beat the Penguins in the final. Okay, so can we sweep the Detroit Red Wings? 
Or are we going to be one of those teams that choke a 3 nothing series lead? Because that does happen sometimes. First period, 2 nothing Detroit. Not a good first period. Two shorthanded goals against on the same power play. Yikes, I've never seen that actually happen in a simulation before. So Goldman and Reimer score both their goals for them. Shots are actually still around even 12 to 8. But we need to play a bit better on our power play now. Because we have been scoring on our power play. But to allow two shorthanded goals on the same power play. That doesn't happen that much. Like in real life I haven't seen that happen a lot either. Second period. Oh my god. 6 nothing them. And they have three shorthanded goals now. Yikes. Okay so this is the Detroit team that won the President's Trophy now. We have uh, startled the beast. And now the beast is woken up. So we're down 6 nothing. There's no way we're coming back from this in the third. If we do, though, that would be one for the ages. It's 6-1 to one as Sidora gets a goal on the power play. But we've allowed three shorthanded goals in a game. I haven't seen that happen at Sim before. Tevardovsky makes it 7-1. to one. Yeah, this one's way over. Oh, my God. Just Detroit, just stop it, man. 8-1. to one. We already know that you won 9-1. to one. My God. So we were playing great defensively, but now this game is really bad. 9-2 to two game. And that is going to be the final in Dallas. Man, I feel bad for the fans that were at that game. Nine goals against. So we do not sweep the Detroit Red Wings, but we allow nine goals. My God. How much points did players have in the three stars? Eh, not as much, but still. Damn, nine goals against. After playing so good in the first few games, hopefully that doesn't mean the rest of the series we're just going to like completely shit the bed. Okay, so we're up 3-1 in the series. Can we please lock it down defensively this time around? Because those first three games, really solid per, uh, play. But that game, 9-2, to that's unlike us. Completely unlike us. Let's knock out Detroit here. Come on, boys. If we lose again by a wide margin, I'm going to probably make some line changes. Though. First period, 1-0 them. I'm not liking that. We're down 10-2, to basically, in terms of the last four periods. A power play goal against from Staples. Shots are in our favor this time around. 14 to 13. Come on, Jagger, you gotta bounce back, man. Second period. 2 1 them. So Shan scores to make it 2 0, but Hodges gets us on the board with another power play goal. So it is a one goal game. We're out shooting them 24 21. Can we tie this one up here in the third? Come on, boys. We got a rebound from that 9 to 2 loss. It was totally unlike us. There you go. Ozilinch ties the game up. The Lafayette legend. Final 10 minutes here of this third period in a tie game. And we're going to take the lead. And it's Stuart Pavelski. And Lundell scores. And we're actually going to be going to the second round. After a really big hiccup in game number four. Nicely done boys. We knock off the second best team in the league. For the third straight season we've knocked out Detroit. I had a feeling just because how D good Detroit simulated and how we just barely made the playoffs, it usually happens where we knock off the team like that. So, Hodges from Antilla and Lundell, Oslinch from Drake and Antilla, Pavelski from Lundell and Patrick, and Lundell from Clancy and McArdle. So we knock off the 108-point Detroit Red Wings team. Hopefully we can do this again where we win the Stanley Cup in the same season there that happens because Detroit had 108 points the year we won the Stanley Cup. And we knocked them out in round one. So hopefully we have a good second round. Let's take a look at our player stats before we see who we're up against in round number two. Anton Lindell, our captain, is playing really well. He normally does play pretty solid in the playoffs, I think. So seven points for Lindell. Sidor was amazing. Six points, five goals in five games. Clancy was good. Same with DeSantis. Wong was good. Hodges and Ozilinch and Tilla pretty solid. Pretty much our entire offense was good. The only players without points so far are Callahan, Cullimore, and Riley had no points. I was plus minus. Pavelski's a minus four, so hmm, that's kind of weird. He'll probably turn it around a bit because I think he was minus badly in our first uh, Stanley Cup with him in the lineup. So that should get turned around, I would assume, if we could win the next round as well. And Jaguar went 4-1 despite having a really bad goals against and stuff like that. And who Depenta was really bad. Three goals on 18 shots. Yikes. Hopefully our goaltending can turn it around next episode for sure. Because <laughs> that is a bit of uh, a downside for sure. 
Let's see who we're up against in round number two. Hopefully, it is a team we could beat. If it's the Winnipeg Jets, we played them as well when we went on to the Stanley Cup. So, and they also had a pretty good season, I'm pretty sure. And while wow, the Rangers, the Presidents Trophy winners, got knocked out by Pittsburgh. Didn't I project uh, that they would probably want be one of those teams that win a Stanley Cup? And we're going to be playing Winnipeg. So this is so far shaping up to be the same as uh, the year that we won the Stanley Cup where we played Detroit and in Winnipeg. This time around, it's the exact same type of thing. They had 10 more wins than us during the regular season. And then in this, uh, the other division, or not the other, yeah, the other well, matchup is Calgary and Sweden. I believe when we went into the Stanley Cup Finals, we did take out Sweden in the Conference Finals. So, so far the route is the same, except for Tampa Bay is not in the East. So yeah, those are the matchups. So let's take a look at these Winnipeg Jets, see how they differ from years past. Do they still have Viktor Kozlov and Heath Kitschuk and all those guys? I don't know. So yes, they do, but uh, Kitschuk is dropping off quite a bit. He's only an 81 now. Bjorkstrand's there and Kozlov is there, but Kozlov's dropping off as well. But they do still produce really well. Like you look, he had 153 points there, now he's up to 90 points. So a bit of a drop off, but this team is still pretty good. Second line, Coltonen, Jeffreyon, and Davidson. Not a fan of the wingers, but a decent center, I guess. Then the third line, they have Mcchesney, Vanier, and Holmquist. Fourth line, Pitlick, Benson, and Galvin. So overall wise, I'm not really a fan of their offensive depth, but then again, I don't. it seems like you don't really need the great offensive depth to win, because Toronto obviously did that last year against us. Defensively, they don't have the greatest defensive core, but once again, they could win. They have Negrin and Ronick, Bylas and Zigov, and Pispinen and Tambolini, who is a young up-and-coming prospect. As for goaltending wise, they have Le Cavalier, who I think was their backup last time we played them. Unless I'm thinking of somebody else. He was in the AHL last year, but now he's in the NHL, which is weird. And then they also have Rymo Allen, who is an up-and-coming goalie. As for scratch players, they have Garvin, Levo, and McPherson. So overall, wise, I think we have the chance to beat them. But then again, like I said that again uh, last year against Toronto, but we didn't beat them. So I'm going to just say it's up in the air on who wins next round. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Dallas Stars franchise mode. So in next episode, we will take it to round two against the Winnipeg Jets as we look to make it back to those conference finals like we did a few years ago. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys next time.